Chapter 8. The enormous blue pole sparkled under the bright sunlight. The sun hovered high overhead. The concrete burned the soles of my bare feet. I couldn't wait to get into the water. Shielding my eyes with one hand, I searched for Elliot, but I couldn't find him in the crowd of kids who were waiting to watch the race. Elliot has probably already played three sports, I told myself. This had to be the perfect camp for my brother. I gazed down the line of girls waiting to compete in the four lap race. We all stood on the edge of a deep end of the pool, waiting to dive in. I silently counted. There were at least two dozen girls in this race, and the pool was wide enough for all of us to have a mate to swim in. Hey, you look terrific in my suit, the Adria said. Her green eyes studied me. You should have tied your hair back, Wendy. It's going to slow you down. Wow, I thought. The Adria really cares about winning. Are you a good swimmer? I asked her. She swallowed a fly on the back of her calf. The best, she replied, grinning. How about you? I have never really raced, I told her. The pool counselors were all young women. They wore white two-piece swimsuits. Across the pool, I saw Holly sitting on the edge of the diving board, talking to another counselor. A tall, red-haired counselor moved to the edge of the pool and blew her whistle. Everyone ready? She called. We all shouted back that we were ready. Then the long line of girls grew silent. We turned to the pool, leaned forward, and prepared to dive in. The water shimmered beneath me. The sun burned down on my, on my back and shoulders. I felt, <laughs> it's the first typo in the book, guys. It says here, I felt about to melt. My real should be, I felt like I was about to melt. But whatever, what can you do? I couldn't wait to jump in. The whistle blew. I sprang forward and hit the water hard. I gasped from the shock of the cold against my hot skin. My arms churned hard as I pulled myself forward. The splash of thrashing arms and kicking feet sounded like the roar of a waterfall. I dipped my face into the water, feeling the refreshing coldness. Turning my head, I glimpsed Deirdre a few lengths behind me. She swam in a steady rhythm, her arms and legs moving smoothly, gracefully. I'm ahead of everyone, I realized, glancing across the pool. I'm winning the race. With a hard kick, I reached the other end of the pool and made a sharp turn and pushed off. As I started back to a deep end, the other girls were still approaching the shallow, excuse me, the shallow wall. Excuse me. As I started back to the deep end, the other girls were still approaching the shallow end wall. Sorry, I thought I was shallowing. I pushed hard on myself. I pushed myself harder. My heart started to pound. I knew I'd win the first lap easily. Then there were three laps to go. Three laps. I suddenly realized how dumb I was. The other girls were pacing themselves. They weren't swimming full speed because they knew it was a four lap race. If I kept swimming this hard, I wouldn't survive two laps. I sucked in a deep breath, then let it out slowly. 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 That was the word of the day. I slowed my kicking, shot my arms out, and pulled them back slowly. Took long breaths, long, slow breaths. As I made my turn and started the second lap, several other swimmers had moved beside me. I caught Deidre's eyes as she swam past. She never broke her steady rhythm. Stroke, stroke, breathe, stroke. On the other side of Deidre, I saw Jan swimming comfortably, easily. Jan was so small and light, she seemed to float over the water. Into the third lap, I kept a few links behind Deirdre. I had to concentrate on keeping a slow, even pace. I pretended I was a robot, programmed to swim slowly. Deirdre turned to the fourth lap a few seconds ahead of me. I saw her expression change as she made her turn. She narrowed her eyes. Her entire face grew tight and tense. Deirdre really wants to win, I saw. I wonder if I could catch her. I wonder if I could beat her. I made my turn and put on the speed. I ignored the aching in my arms. I ignored the cramp in my left foot. I thrust myself forward, kicking hard from the waist. My hands cut through the water. Faster. I glimpsed Jan fall behind. I saw the disappointment on her face as I passed by. Pounding, thrusting arms and legs churned the water to froth. The splashing became a roar. The roar nearly drowned out the cheers of the kids watching from around the pool. My heart thudded so hard, I thought my chest might explode. 
My arms ached. They felt as if they each weighed a thousand pounds. Faster. I pulled up beside Deirdre. Close. So close. I could hear her gasping breaths. I glimpsed her face tight with concentration. She's just like Elliot, I decided. She wants to win so badly. Lots of times I let Elliot win a game because he cared about it so much than I did, and so did Deirdre. As we neared the wall at the deep end, I let Deirdre pull ahead. I saw how much it meant to her. I saw how desperate she was to finish first. What the heck, I thought. There's nothing wrong with coming in second. I heard the cheers ring out as Deirdre won the race. I touched the wall, then dipped below the surface. I pulled myself up and grabbed the pole's edge. My entire body ached and throbbed. I gasped in breath after breath. I shut my eyes and pulled my hair back with both hands, squeezing the water out of it. My arms were so tired, I could barely pull myself out of the pool. I was one of the last swimmers out. The others had formed, excuse me, the others had all formed a circle around Deirdre. I pushed my way into the crowd of girls to see what was happening. My eyes burned. I brushed water out of them. I saw the red-haired counselor hands up in the Deirdre. Something gold and shiny. Everyone cheered. Then the circle broke and the girls all headed in different directions. I made my way up to Deirdre. Way to go, I exclaimed. I came close, but you're really fast. I'm on the swim team at school, she replied. She held up the gold object the counselor had given her. I could see it clearly now. A shiny gold coin. It had a smiling, excuse me, it had a smiling King Jelly Gem engraved on it. I couldn't read the words around the edge of the coin, but I could guess what they were. It's my fifth king coin, Deirdre declared proudly. Why is she so excited about it, I wondered. It wasn't a real coin. It probably wasn't even real gold. What's a king coin, I asked. The coin gleamed in the sunlight. If I win one more king coin, I can walk in the winner's walk, Deirdre explained. I started to ask what the winner's walk was, but Jen and Ivy came running out to congratulate Deirdre, and the three of them all started talking at once. I suddenly remember my brother. Where was, excuse me. Where is Elliot? I wondered. What has he been doing? I turned away from Deirdre and the other girls and started toward the pool exit, but I had only taken a few steps when I heard someone call my name. I spun around to see Holly jogging toward me. Her purple lipstick lips were knotted in a fretful expression. Wendy, you better come with me, the counselor told me. My heart skipped. Huh? What's wrong? I asked. I'm afraid there's a problem. Holly said softly. Chapter 9, next time. John B., a.k.a. Smooth Chocolate, talking to you. Have a good rest of your Tuesday. Goodbye, everyone. Love you guys.